Costa Rica is insane. We're finally here and I had no idea what to expect. Are we gonna be in a five-star hotel? Are we gonna be in a glorified treehouse? We got a condo basically, it's like a compound. This is the driveway. We're walking down the driveway, lush, beautiful grass, plants everywhere that you'd only find in a garden center back home. This is paradise. Welcome to Costa Rica. It is no secret that I love dart frogs, and I've got several of them, but this species right here, this is a species of Philobates. You see the mints that I have at home? This one they often call a lovely dart frog, and uh, one of the more poisonous species, not something you'd want to handle, definitely not something that you'd want to ingest, and that's why it's so brightly colored. It's heavily pigmented on the tops of its arms and its legs, and that, along with the dorsal striping, the yellow striping, is to tell predators to back off, do not eat me, or I'm going to totally ruin your day. Again, in captivity, if you keep these, they are completely harmless because the way that they get their poison are from the insects that they eat out in the wild. So here, you're gonna find those insects. In captivity, you'll feed them things like fruit flies. That's not what you'd find them eating here. Philobates can be some of the most poisonous species in the entire world. This one here, not as crazy as the Terribilis, which you'd find the mints and the Blackfoots and things like that. You'll find these in Costa Rica, only on the Caribbean side. If you go a little bit further south and a little bit further west, you're not gonna find this species of dart frog, and that's why I think it's so cool, and that's why, I just got bit by something, and that's why it was one of the bucket list amphibians to find on this tour. Just a cool species of frog. This is a night lizard. This is one of the lizards that I talked about forever ago and was told you'll never see these. These are very rare. You don't see them in captivity basically ever. But to find one in the wild, even though it is not full size, is super cool. They have a wicked bite, so I'm gonna stay far away from this thing. They can drop their tails, which is kind of a pet peeve, but I'm not gonna touch it anyway. Just look at the beautiful lizard that this is. You'll find them basically everywhere. You're gonna find them in the trees. You're gonna find them on pieces of log like this one as well. Their face looks almost crocodilian and so does their dorsal. Just the bumps on it, this kind of spikiness of the tail. And also just the way that their fingers grasp trees is unbelievable. And look at the yellow spots, a yellow spot. Night Lizard, this is one of the coolest things that I never thought in a million years I would ever find. I am super happy that I found one of these, very cool, and just take a look at these freaking eyes. Unbelievable. I know what he's saying. <laughs> he's a man who wants to keep his fingers. This yeah, I know. I was getting nervous. I got almost it's, got my thumb. Yeah, yours is small, dude. Like, bro, that's so rude of you to say. <laughs> What we have here, Ufaga pumilio, so a red frog with blue legs. This looks like it's wearing jeans, kind of, hopping away from me. We're staring eye to eye right here. So this one here, you wouldn't want to touch it, because you don't touch frogs, but you definitely wouldn't want this thing in your eyes, your mouth, your nose, anything like that. Because in captivity, this thing would be completely harmless, but in the wild, this thing would be extremely not fun to be in your orifices. That's a weird thing to say on the video. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is be careful around poison dart frogs. You'll find these in Costa Rica here, you'll find them in Nicaragua, and then if you go down to Panama, totally blue, you can find a variety of these. Very cool frog, this is about the size that they get, and uh, just overall, one of the coolest species of poison dart frog that you're going to get, Ufaga pumilio. How are you feeling? I feel... I feel like I got to pet a dog today. Yeah. I got to sit really close to two other sweaty guys, which was fun. And I got to see a river that was clean flow into a dirty river. And now I look like I'm drinking the dirty river of water. <laughs> 
So but today, it tastes good. It tastes delicious, and today has been a fantastic day. Herping in Costa Rica in the day is one thing, but now it is six o'clock, the sun has just went down, and we are ready to go find some amazing animals at night after hiking for like three hours. There are tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of species of insects in Central America and South America. The one I was most excited to see, leafcutter ants. These are going up and down the tree, taking little pieces of leaves, cutting them with their mandibles, bringing them back to the, where they live, and they're going to take a special precaution to make sure that there's nothing on that leaf that might harm their den, their nest, whatever you want to call it. So they kind of have like a bodyguard on the leaf to prevent hitchhikers from coming back into the nest. A super sophisticated way, the coolest thing ever, kind of like the march of the ants, if you will. And one of the things I remember as a little kid watching in nature documentaries, to be standing here right now is the most amazing thing ever. I never thought I'd get this opportunity. Leaf cutter ants are pretty cool. You guys know that I love hog noses. That's what I based the entire channel on at the beginning. This is kind of like a hog nose snake, but it's a pit viper. This is the hog nose pit viper. Something you find in Costa Rica, they not always this small. They can get to, well, just around a meter. Of the 17 species of pit viper in Costa Rica, this is one, just because of the name, I was looking forward to seeing. I actually have never heard of this snake ever before, but it's pretty cool. What we have here, is a dead camera and also a slug eating snake. This is something that I've talked about in top five videos before. It is a harmless snake, but one of the coolest ones, very slender body, giant eyes, kind of like a cat eye looking type snake and just one of the coolest snakes that you can find here in Costa Rica. What we have here is what I came here to see. This is a Fertilance, one of the coolest venomous snakes on the entire planet, and maybe not the most venomous one that you're gonna find in Costa Rica, but if you're gonna find someone who's got bit by something that is venomous, it's gonna ruin their day, it's likely gonna be a Fertilance. They're common, they bite people more than any other snake in Costa Rica. One of the coolest snakes ever, and I hope we can see a little bit of a bigger one because this one is not even close to as big as they get. What's going on? Uh, Mike fell in a forest and made it sound like a tree was falling. Yep. And then we found a bunch of snakes, and then uh, we're trying to coax a snake to come down this way. And uh, my battery died. So thank you for filming this. And I lost my flashlight. You did lose your flashlight. This isn't Besides mine. falling, I'm good. Great first day. That was a bullet ant. Oh yeah. It was on your foot the whole time? That was time? on my face. In your face? That was on my face. It didn't hmm. sting me though. I'm sure we would have known about it if it did. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> when you think Costa Rica, usually one of few animals comes to mind, you know, sloths, etc. But the red-eyed tree frog. Oh, that was it. Really? You all right? My you okay? What was it? It had to have been a bullet ant. It was fuzzy and hard. Were you, you were recording, right? Yeah, right there. That was it. Wait. Oh. Right there. I'm so glad that I have freaking rubber boots this time. <laughs> what we have here is a really cool trail. We're finding very cool stuff, but like what you just saw, that is kind of the theme of the night, falling down. First one to fall down has to get bit by a bullet ant, and uh, Mike is not immune to this challenge. So all night hearing red-eyed tree frog calls, but no actual red-eyed tree frogs. But what we have here is actual red-eyed tree frog eggs. So less than a month from the time that they're laid on the underside of a broad leaf to the time that they turn into tadpoles, and then they're gonna fall into a puddle or a stream or whatever they're laid above, and then they're gonna turn into tadpoles, and then morph into frogs, and then be red-eyed tree frogs. When you think of tree frogs, perhaps the most iconic frog in the entire world, the red-eyed tree frog. We saw a mass of eggs underneath a broad leaf, just like this one, 
10 feet away 45 minutes ago, and we found one. These are abundant in Costa Rica, and even though it is the end of the rainy season, you can see these guys pretty much everywhere. You hear the call, the camouflage is absolutely amazing. To find one of these in the wild is a bucket list thing for anybody, and to be in Costa Rica for less than 12 hours and see one of the coolest frogs in the entire world, and maybe the most common pet tree frog in the entire world, the red-eyed tree frog. This is something else. Before we continue, today's video is brought to you in part by CR Wild. Christian, what is CR Wild and how can people get involved? Oh man, where can I start? CR Wild is a tourist company in Costa Rica. It's basically we promote uh, amphibians and reptiles conservation through all the uh, tropics, through education, science, and tourism. If you are coming to Costa Rica to have a herping expedition, just let, me, let us know. We have tailor-made expeditions, night tours, and herping expeditions. I want to say thank you again to CR Wild. I've always wanted to come to Central America, and this was definitely the best experience. Exceeded my expectations in every single way. Click the link below if you're interested. CR Wild, Christian, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. We've got some guides on this tour, which is really cool. And they're making these noises and I'm thinking, what are they doing? They were looking for this frog right here, which is a Cruzio hyla type species or in that family. You might know them as a common name if they have one as a tiger leg type of frog or a tree frog, tiger leg tree frog. A very interesting species, very cool. One that has a unique call and uh, it's very cool that you can just call them as a human and there they go. So very interesting to find them this close to the ground. They are a species that you're gonna find in the canopy most often. I can't believe I've seen this frog. What we have here is a cat eye snake, which is very cool. They're a rear fang snake. We talk about rear fang snakes on the channel all the time. This one though is gonna pack a little bit of a punch. If you get bit by this one, you're gonna have a bad day. Maybe not ruin your life or lose a limb. I do think this thing is one of the cooler snakes. You're gonna find it over pools of water like we found it here, and that's because they're gonna eat amphibians. They get hungry too. There's a pool of water just over there. There's tadpoles everywhere, and when there's tadpoles, that means that there's frogs. And maybe tonight, he's gonna have a good meal. As much as it was a bucket list thing to come to an actual rainforest in Central America, the idea for me and for the channel and what I'm trying to convey to you is simply how do you keep these things in captivity that you find? Things like dart frogs, if you have an erratus, for example, Dendrobates erratus, if you have Ufaga species, something like that that comes from this area, even common boa constrictors, how are you supposed to keep them? You're gonna notice a few things that are very obvious, the ground, is perma wet, it is completely wet. So no, you can't have a completely wet substrate all the time, but you have to have an area for them to dry out. And that's where the, the leaf litter comes in. So in your enclosures for your dart frogs, small animals, anything like that, if you have a leaf litter, that is the idea. So yes, a dream come true to come here, but at the end of the day, I want that to be the takeaway. Oh, and by the way, this tree is 200 years old. Breakfast, man. I'm having toast and uh, eggs. It's a very eclectic, you can only find this in Costa Rica, only on the Medi uh, Mediterranean, only on the east during the <laughs> Mediterranean. I was, I was like, wait, what? Only on the Caribbean side can you find delicacies like white bread with butter and eggs from a real chicken. I'm very excited to have this meal. I'm very grateful. And hopefully, when we get back home, we can find somewhere that also serves meals just like this. Hopefully. What just happened? Uh, I think I have ants in my pants and socks and stuff. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Okay guys, so Adam was literally just standing in that spot with all those ants and- uh, No uncles, not one. <laughs> I felt they would have been more friendly, I guess. Holy. I felt terrible. Are I you felt okay? awful. Yeah. That was a whole nest of uh, bullet ants firing with guns. They had guns, all of them. <laughs> Rapid fire. Gang violence here in Costa Rica on my legs. We've got a trail behind us here, and the way that it was explained to me is there's indigenous people. We're going to enter a gated park, 
it's private property and beyond the river that we're about to go to, it is a totally indigenous land. So just like you'd find in North America or anywhere else, no hunting, no farming, no infrastructure, no nothing. It belongs to these people. And they use this trail right behind me here to go to a zip line and then zip line over the river in order to get to where they are, zip line back when they need medicine, food, products like that and then they zip line back home. It's very cool, very interesting, and not like anything I've ever seen ever before. So we're walking a trail and we see a very familiar face, a shovel nose face. Last night we found one of these hog nose pit vipers and we found another one, almost the same size. The coloration's a little bit different. I don't know if that's because they're, it's during the day or if that's just the way that this individual looks. But what's really cool about these, although they'll get to three, four feet, something like that, this is an animal that, I don't know how long it's been alive, but it seems like it's thriving. It's a very good size. It seems like it's hydrated, even though it's been a little bit dry in Costa Rica where we are now. A very cool species, very polymorphic as well. They come in yellows, they come in reds, and they come in kind of a brown color with like a yellow dorsal like this. One of the coolest species that I've ever seen in person and being this close to an actual pit viper to me, it's kind of a bucket list thing. Hognose pit vipers are really cool. Blitoglossa. This is a type of salamander that has kind of like a gecko type foot. Very cool to see, especially during the day. Kind of found it on this rock, it just rained. So it's got moss here, it's very moist, and as salamanders, as all salamanders are amphibians, it does take in moisture through its skin. The way that it's looking at me right now and creeping towards me is, I can't even put into words how cool this is. Not only does it have these gecko type feet, it's a ridge headed salamander. And just looking at its head, it almost has like a triangle pattern, and just the texture is very different as well. The eyes are like slit sideways. They look super cool. And oh, by the way, it can shoot its tongue out like a chameleon. It is the coolest thing that I've ever seen. Costa Rica, you find a lot of cool things. Bolitoglossa or ridge-headed salamanders, maybe the most unique looking animal I've seen so far. Okay, so third night herping in the jungles of Costa Rica on the Caribbean side, so the eastern side of the country. This right here, Dakiloa frenada. It's just basically a giant anole. And when I say giant, it gets twice this size. So to see one this still is magnificent. I knew we were gonna see some of these or at least was hoping. I know that they're not super rare, but to see them and stunned by the light, thankfully, the, the fact that it's just standing here is absolutely amazing. They're gonna eat things like insects and stuff and uh, hopefully we can let this guy get on with his night and he's gonna find some food before something makes him into food. Watching nature documentaries as a kid, one of the coolest things to me was how do they find animals breeding? How are they just happen upon these animals as they're finding each other, especially frogs when they're calling and they're mating? We found glass frogs. Valerie, glass frogs. Right above my head, there is a leaf. Right below that is a river. And what you're seeing right here is a male frog on top of a female frog. He's shimmying around. He's trying to stimulate her to drop some eggs so he can fertilize them. We saw before that there was two other males and they were competing as well with their calls. They were competing with each other so that they could be the father of the next generation. Once the eggs hatch, the tadpoles will drop right into the river and eventually they'll become frogs. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, something I would never see ever. And truly, we just happened to see this because we heard them, we looked up and there they were. Glass frogs are unreal. So I'd say we're about an hour and a half, maybe two hours into this hike. I threw my bag down to take a rest, but we've seen some amazing animals. We've seen some whip scorpions, some giant fisher spiders. We've seen some amazing animals, some snakes, some lizards, some glass frogs. Now we're gonna go try to find maybe something venomous, something more exciting, something incredible. Let's go find it. got here is a diploglossus species. It's a galley wasp is what it is. That's what you're going to know it as. You're going to find these on the ground just like this. What's interesting is you're normally going to find them during the day because they're diurnal. These are going to be found in forests. They're going to be found in several parts of Costa Rica, 
especially where we are now, which is on the eastern side, the Caribbean side, you're gonna find these guys eating things like small insects. You might find them under leaves like this. If you watch my friend Diane at Reptiliatus, he just did a, a segment on these as well in his video. He literally uncovered it with the leaf and that's where he found it. Just heard some rustling on the ground and then there it was as soon as we uncovered the leaf. A very cool species, galley wasps are something I didn't expect to see because they are secretive, they're difficult to find and kind of rare. But here it is, right in front of me. What we found right here is what we came here to see. Not many people have seen a basilisk plumifrons this close up in person. The eyes of this thing look like a dragon. The frill of this thing, which is a crest on its head that goes all the way down its back to its tail, makes it look like a dragon. I would not be shocked if this thing grew wings, flew away, and started breathing fire on the forest. This is the most incredible lizard I have ever seen in my entire life this close in person. It's one thing to see it in a documentary or a photograph, but to see it this close is a magical experience. Basilisk, unreal. Last day on the Caribbean side, we're about to get in the car and I figure while we wait for everyone to load up, let's look, at, look under some leaves, maybe find some dart frogs, something like that. Sometimes if you look under a leaf like there or like right there, literally. So we're just looking for under leaves and what do we find? It's a granulated glass frog. This is a very rare species. It's not something, sure you see them in the pet trade a little bit, but there are different species of glass frog. We saw a bunch of Valerie glass frogs last night. We saw another species as well. But this one right here, like all glass frogs, the reason they're called that, the underside of them, you can actually see their organs sometimes, their heart beating, things like that. So kind of a tiny frog. We saw some breeding going on yesterday, so there's definitely more happening and more gonna be bred and born in Costa Rica. But to find this right here, just on a whim as we leave, that's pretty darn cool. This right here is Dendrobates erratus. This is something that I keep in my personal collection. We've talked about them before. I have four of them together with morning geckos, which is hilarious because right behind where Nadim found this, there's morning geckos, which are invasive here. This is a very cool species. This is kind of the size that they get, which makes me excited because the ones I have at home are not full size yet. A beautiful greenish blue and black, kind of the green and black Costa Rican dart frog. One of my favorite species, actually the favorite that I have in my collection because they are so bold and we actually found this guy in the sun with a UVI reading of something like seven. Unbelievable. Never thought I was going to see these and here it is right in front of me. This is one of the more rare finds, not only on the property in the jungle in Costa Rica, but the entire world, because there is nothing like a velvet worm. This is a red type velvet worm. It's got these tentacles right here. It has a mucus sac that runs down both sides of its body, and it will shoot a mucus at whatever it is that it thinks it wants to eat. It hardens basically like cement instantly, and then it eats it while it's still alive. This thing is a horror movie in a tube shape. It is one of the coolest things ever. And by the way, I didn't call it an insect. I didn't call it an arachnid. I didn't call it anything like that because it's not. There is nothing like a velvet worm. It is basically an alien from outer space that eats things alive. I think Stephen King's gonna write a book about these. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. This was just the appetizer. The coolest stuff we saw was in the cloud forest and the Pacific side, which was the second half of the trip. If you'd like another video, if you want to see all the coolest stuff, the pit vipers, the tarantulas, the toucans, the spider monkeys, all that sort of thing, hit like, leave a comment, let us know you want to see it. Thank you very much, as always, to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. If it wasn't for you guys, doing trips like this would be basically impossible. Patreon got early access to this video. They know about all sorts of crazy things from the cloud forest and Pacific side I haven't shown on the channel yet. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon club too. And uh, because you do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Monday.